It was supposed to fundamentally reform the way police work in Chicago, but five years into a federal consent decree, forcing change on the Chicago Police Department has proven to be a lot slower and tougher than anybody expected. And a Fox 32 investigation has found it's also proving to be much more expensive than anticipated. Fox 32's Dane Placco with a special report tonight on a consent decree that seems to be stuck in concrete. Uh, today is an historic day for the city of Chicago. September 14th, 2018, Chicago's police chief, mayor, and the Illinois attorney general unveil a 229-page consent decree promising to fundamentally change Chicago policing. The consent decree is a detailed and comprehensive roadmap to reform the Chicagoans need and can be proud of. But 1,734 days later, seemingly nobody's proud or happy with how it's working. We are in year five and we are not very far along. Well, it's just another layer of bureaucracy. And we are not satisfied with the progress. It has failed. It has failed miserably. Laquan McDonald's great uncle, the ACLU, a Chicago alderman, and the former Chicago inspector general. Four stakeholders with four perspectives on the consent decree, yet all disappointed. The actual whole idea of the document in and of itself came about as a result of the death of my great nephew Laquan McDonald, 16 year old, shot down in the streets of Chicago. It was the anger sparked over the 2014 police shooting of McDonald that prompted a U.S. Justice Department investigation of Chicago police. That investigation found a culture of routinely violating the constitutional rights of black and Latino Chicagoans. The consent decree ordered changes in everything from police use of force to foot pursuits to anti-discrimination training to police wellness. But the ACLU says it's still being inundated with reports of police abuse. Police officers still are not respecting members of the community uh, in day-to-day -day interactions like, uh, you know, pedestrian stops. Um, traffic stops, these everyday interactions that are aggressive and hostile and uh, insulting and often racist. And that hasn't changed in the last four years. The consent decree was supposed to be completed by 2024, but that deadline has already been extended another three years. And according to the department's own data dashboard, they've reached full compliance on just 5% of the consent decree's requirements. The consent decree was oversold and overmarketed as what was going to cure our ills. That was one big mistake. Former Chicago Inspector General Joe Ferguson, who had a seat at the table when the consent decree was being drawn, says it's being hampered by a revolving door at City Hall, including three mayors, four police superintendents, and five corporation councils, the city's top lawyer. And Ferguson says there's been a huge lack of transparency. At, at a time when this entire reform enterprise is really being questioned by the public, legitimacy and effectiveness, um, this all happens behind a curtain, and that's not good. Change doesn't happen in Chicago in the dark. And then there's the cost. The federal court appointed a team of outside lawyers led by Maggie Hickey to serve as independent monitors tracking the police department's progress and reporting to a federal judge, billing hundreds of dollars an hour. The decree caps their legal fees and expenses at $2.85 million a year. But a public records request by Fox 32 found the monitors blew past that cap in each of the past three years by $374,000 in 2020, $287,000 in 2021, and last year the monitors billed more than $4.1 million, nearly $1.3 million over the cap. Altogether, the lawyers have billed nearly $14 million to oversee the consent decree. And it's in the vested interests of the monitors who make a living doing this. Uh, they're going to tell us you're nowhere near done. By the way, give us some more money. Alderman Brian Hopkins chairs the City Council's Public Safety Committee. He opposed the consent decree, saying the city would have been better off spending that money on police training and equipment. All of that was in progress on the day we signed the consent decree. And I think you could argue that without the burden of a federal monitor 
and without that extra layer of bureaucratic oversight, we might actually be farther in achieving those goals today. The monitor herself is pointing at staffing shortages to explain the slow pace. Writing in a recent report, we have observed a pattern where the CPD makes significant progress with the consent decree, which then diminishes as the CPD shifts resources towards deployments and unspecified crime reduction strategies. Uh, we were really hoping that the life of Laquan McDonald would bring about uh, a positive change, you know, take this negative and create something positive out of it because we can't get his life back. But the way to do that would have been really, we thought, uh, to get real police reform. Now it's up to new Mayor Brandon Johnson to prioritize the pace of police reform with the appointment of Chicago's next top cop. The process for appointing the superintendent is really crucial uh, and um, we do think that uh, it will set the tone going forward and it is very, very important that the mayor um, select someone who has the capacity to bring about that culture change that we were talking about. But some worry that could take years. The Los Angeles Police Department was under a federal consent decree for 13 years that cost taxpayers there more than $300 million. I'm afraid we're in a similar situation here. Uh, I hope it's not as bad as Los Angeles and their experience, but we have no guarantees at this point. The job of public officials is to try to do the impossible. And this seems impossible, except it's not. Dane Placco, Fox 32 Chicago. We reached out to Mayor Johnson and Maggie Hickey regarding our story tonight. We have not yet heard back.